Hey everybody, my name's Democracy, and we're back with more rankings on the worst to best bosses in... Soulsborn? Darkborn? Demon Dark Blood 3? Uh, I don't even know anymore. Last video we checked out my choices for the top 10 worst bosses in the series, and today we'll be checking out numbers 129 to 115. I want to give quick clarification on the boss criteria because I think I may have caused a little bit of confusion. The difficulty score is not based on how difficult the fight is, but how fair the challenge feels in the context of the fight. So even though I find Blue Smelter to be one of the hardest bosses in the series, I gave it a low score because I feel like the run-up to the demon makes the fight a little bit bullshit. Lore is not based on the actual lore of the boss, but rather how well the boss represents its lore and if it adds something to the fight. To use the Bed of Chaos as an example, while the story of the Witch of Izalip is top-notch, I personally felt the Bed of Chaos was a very poor representation of that lore and adds nothing to the fight as a result, earning it the zero score. And lastly, design is not based on the appearance of the boss, instead it's based on the mechanics of the fight. Bosses like Wolnir have an incredible look, but the actual mechanics of bracelet smashing and poison dodging just didn't do it for me. With that in mind, let's kick things off with number 129. For those of you who haven't played Demon Souls, let me paint a picture for you. Imagine if you took the atmosphere of Blight Town, the precarious setting of the gutter, and challenges similar to Fair and Keep, and you've got the Valley of Defilement! This area is straight up awful your first time through, so perhaps it's for the best that the boss of 5 1 is the easy and disappointing leechmonger. This disgusting amalgamation of leeches does almost nothing to put you in danger. The points it got for me are largely thanks to the unique arena. I think it's really neat that you have the option to safely fight Leechmonger from above, and it makes this fight even more of a joke than if you murder it with melee. No matter how you handle the fight though, Leechmonger is disappointingly simple, boring, has no value in terms of lore other than, hey, I got some leeches together and made... this. Nasty. I think a few of you were surprised not to see this boss much lower on the list, but there's two things that slightly elevate this fight for me. First, the bench placement is useful for crowd control, which is good design from my viewpoint. And second, this boss actually has some lore. The citizens of Desoldoro were ravaged after the Duke's dear Freyha spread her army of offspring across the region. And some of the very few that managed to escape the terror took refuge in this church to be healed by priests. Yeah, that's right, you're walking into what is essentially an emergency clinic and slaughtering the wounded and their caregivers. That's not all though, the Magus found their way to Desaldera for one of possibly two reasons. Either to help the sick or take advantage of their plight as an easy way to steal their souls. So you can look at this fight two ways. Either you are a monster slaughtering the innocent, helpless folk within, or you're saving the victims of an evil mage from further slavery. And so we find our first Asylum Demon ripoff. Let's start with the good. First, at least the Fire Sage gets a fiery retexture, and second, at least there's actually some decent lore to go along with it. The demon was actually a master of fire sorceries prior to the Chaos Flame disaster. It can also be inferred that he was very high ranking among the demons due to his close proximity to the Bed of Chaos. The problem I have with all this is that while the lore is decent, he could have had a much more unique design as one of the originators of Pyromancies. It's the same problem I have with the Bed of Chaos. While the lore there is excellent, I feel the boss should have been some epic archdemon or something to match it. It really makes me curious what the Lost Isolith could have been if FromSoft had had the time to fully develop it. In its current state though, the Demon Fire Sage is just another face in the lineup of fiery disappointments. Speaking of fiery disappointments, we've got the most boring fight since the Red Dragon. That's because this fight is mind-numbingly easy. The only opposition you'll face in this entire fight is a dragon staying out of your reach. But when it's on the ground, it's a sitting duck for punishment. I gave it a few points to every category because it isn't exactly terrible, it's just not a fight I find myself remembering fondly. The difficulty is bunk, the lore isn't much more than hey, there's a dragon guarding the dragonary. The design is similar to other Dark Souls 2 dragons that were done a lot better, and the entertainment is minimal. Can't muster up much else to say about this disappointing dragon. But there is no other dragon in the series more disappointing than the Dragon God. This guy was treated as the pinnacle of Demon Souls throughout the marketing campaign and opening cinematic. And when you finally best Flame Lurker for the right to take on this guy, you're met with a puzzling arena. 
Puzzling is a good word because that's exactly what this fight is, a puzzle. Except it isn't a complicated puzzle fight. It's as simple as run and hide behind the pillars, hit some rubble, fire a few ballistas, and then smack it in the face. Literally the only thing I would argue about this fight that is even close to average is the lore. The whole arena you fight in was actually designed by ancient worshippers of this so-called god. They made it specifically so they could worship the dragon and contain it. So this guy was kidnapped by a bunch of weirdos and stuck inside a death trap created with the sole purpose of killing him if necessary. It's no wonder he's so pissed! Ugh, I hate fighting this stupid tree! This boss feels like the evolution of Agitator. Not a good evolution, mind you, but a frustrating one. That's because it can be a serious pain to hit its weak spots. The tree moves in weird ways that almost remind me of Mimics, so you might think you're in a good position and then all of a sudden the tree flops in a different direction. But by far my least favorite part of this fight is the acid diarrhea. Yeah, that's foul, but what else would you call it? Every time it uses this move, it makes it so you're unable to get anywhere near it for almost 10 seconds. And if you're unlucky, it'll just keep doing it. That can make this fight painfully long. With this fight already being a pain in the ass, the last thing we need is for it to last longer. More Dark Souls 2 and more reskin ganks. And let's be honest, this is probably the worst of them all if we're being objective. Whereas the Dragon Riders are shit copies in the main game, these pussies are shit copies in a DLC that only included three boss fights. So that means 60% of the bosses in a paid DLC are essentially identical. The only difference is that there's two. Ooh, ah! Putting that aside, there's one other big thing to mention. You know how I complained about the run up to Blue Kool-Aid? Well this is undoubtedly the worst run to a boss in the entire series. I'm sure anyone who's run through this frozen hellscape knows exactly what I'm talking about. Not only can you barely see where you're going 90% of the time, but when you least expect it, you'll get attacked by these frosted reindeer from <laughs> This isn't only one of the worst runs to a boss in the series, this is one of the worst areas in the series. But we'll get to that one another day. The only thing preventing this boss from being right up there with a bed of chaos is that for some odd reason, I actually found myself enjoying it. Not a lot, but enough to keep it out of the bullshit boss hall of fame. And here we got another snub from our list of the most boring Dark Blood bosses. All you have to do is dodge to get behind it and then you have forever to wail on the idiot while it continues attacking thin air. If you come to this fight unprepared damage wise, you could have to deal with its copies and purple mist, but all you have to do during that phase is run in circles around the arena until it's over. I'm serious, if you haven't tried it, I guarantee you it'll work. So I'll give a little credit for difficulty if you weren't prepared, the design of the second phase is pretty unique, and seeing a formless great one definitely adds a little bit to the lore. But that does not save this fight from being yet another snooze fest. My easiest boss in Dark Demons also ranks in the top 20 worst. I mean, it's not even really a fight, it's more of a speed bump. I'll give a tiny bit of difficulty credit since I do believe Pinwheel is intended to be fought much earlier in the game than most face him, but I've heard from some of you that even when you take on the Catacombs right after the Asylum, Pinwheel is still a joke. At least it's a little bit of fun smacking this goober around, and there is some interesting lore about stealing secrets from Nito underneath it all. It's a shame those secrets prove useless in an actual fight. I'm gonna keep this super brief and just be straight up with you guys. I just cannot stand these demon reskins. I don't know what is so offensive to me about these two. Maybe I'm just jealous of that ass. Yeah. So while I do give this demon credit for having AoE attacks to surprise the player expecting a carbon copy of the earlier boss fight, that's about all there really is that stands out here. This boss is what we're gonna call Lore Fodder. By that I mean there's no value to this fight other than its lore. The difficulty doesn't even come close to matching the strength of the giant's leader, the design is almost a complete reskin of an earlier boss, and the charm of ankle hacking had worn off on me by this point in the game. But from a story perspective, knowing that your player travel back in time to best the Lord of Giants is a pretty cool concept. It also adds a lot more value to the fight at Mirrors. But that's about it.
This giant is the exact opposite of the giant lord. This guy has absolutely zero lore, but he's at least got a somewhat interesting design. And by interesting, I mean unique and questionably bullshit. This guy has a few metal balls attached to his body. Once you get past his boring phase one, he'll use his massive balls for exactly what they were made for, wrecking your ass. Just look at that. I can't believe how much HP that attack takes. This is a layer three dungeon, which for those of you who haven't played Bloodborne means this dungeon is scaled for a player at about level 60 to 80. And he did that much damage to a level 190 character with 70 vitality. So even though he has cool design that adds some tense moments to the fight, that chain attack is utterly ridiculous. Oh, these lovely ladies. Let's put aside the fact that the ghoulish girls roaming the arena have no interest in you and that the fight is way too easy. Beyond the difficulty issues, I actually enjoy what FromSoft was going for here. It's a really unique idea that just wasn't executed perfectly. If the witches had been able to provide a stronger opposition, this could have been so much better. But scoring the fight as it stands, it's a cool concept that just didn't deliver on its potential. All right, I'm sure some of you were expecting this road mob much lower on the list. I can see why. This fight is one of the easiest in the series outside of its toxic potential, the design just seems lazy, and the lore is just another Rat King trial. But I really just love smashing these little buggers with my Great Club. I had way too much fun running around the arena role-playing as an exterminator with his trusty beating stick. So yeah, this fight is grade A rat crap, but at least I got some entertainment out of it. And so we're gonna end today with yet another disappointing dragon. At least it's not quite as bad as the others so far. In contrast to the red dragon, you don't have to wait forever for its drive-bys to give you an attack window. In the first half, it actually just sits there like an idiot letting you hit it. This phase is a big part of what lands at this low on the list. What quality boss would do this? They wouldn't, but at least the second phase is better. The dragon moves atop the peak of the Boletarian Palace. Now it becomes mostly an environmental hazard. It should be simple to time your advance, but I had a heck of a time making it through on my first playthrough. Once you make it up, you have to shoot a million arrows once again, but hey, at least it's got some parts that outshine what we've seen so far. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed checking out more of the bullshit boring boss battles in Darkborn with me. Next week we'll be finishing up the bosses outside the top 100 and more, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome Blood Souls content. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.